Oh, why hello there and welcome to a brand new video. Today, we're going to be going through the best game from every year. Not literally every year that gaming's been around because there's a lot of old school games that I've not played specifically in the 80s. So, for this video, what we'll do is we're going to go from 1989 all the way to present day. So that's 35 years of video games right there. So a little disclaimer before I start because I don't want to ramble on too much in the intro here. But these are going to be my personal favourite games from each year. So this isn't every game that is universally loved from each year. You know, based on the majority. This is all based on my own opinion and my own experiences with these games. But without any further ado, let's get this shit started, shall we? So starting off with 1989, The Revenge of Shinobi. One of the very few games that I played on the Sega. I'm not sure which console it was. I think it might be the Sega Genesis. But this was an awesome Sega game. Very underrated Sega game, if you ask me. You know, people usually talk about, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog and shit. But this was an awesome game back on uh, the Sega console, man. It was hard as fuck. I don't think I ever actually beat this as a kid because it had a brutal old school continue system where you lose all your lives, lose all your continues. You have to restart the entire game. So I don't believe I ever actually finished it as a kid, but I did as an adult and it is a awesome game, dude. With really fun gameplay, just a classic 2D side scroller. 1990, Super Mario World. I mean, it's Super Mario. Like, come on. Even if you've never played games, you've heard of Super Mario. And this is probably one of the best Mario games out there. And, you know, in my opinion, this might actually be the best one. I've not played that many Mario games, but from what I've played, this was easily my favourite game. I mean, it's a super vibrant game with really tight controls for the time. It's, a, you know, surprisingly fluid for the time where, you know, there was a lot of really janky sort of unrefined games here you had a game with really fluid controls really fun platforming great color usage i mean look how colorful this game is and a cracking soundtrack as well 1991 sonic the hedgehog another classic platformer right here another series that even if you've never heard of you know even if you've never played a game in your life you've heard of sonic the hedgehog it was one of the best platformers of the time on the Sega Genesis, which rivaled Super Mario, you know? Back when Sega still had consoles and that. And this is just another classic platformer of that time period that pretty much everybody's played if they've ever even picked up a controller. 1992, Streets of Rage 2. One of the very few beat-up games that I've played, especially old-school beat-ups. It's not really one of my preferred genres. But this was an awesome, simplistic beam-up game with an absolute banger of a soundtrack. The music is absolutely phenomenal in this game and the gameplay was really fun as well. You could play it solo or you could even play it with a friend. It was pretty damn tough, you know. Some of those enemies would absolutely kick your ass, man, especially some of the bosses. But it was a really fun game nonetheless. 1993, motherfucking Doom. What do I need to say, man? One of the best first-person shooters of all time. Pretty much the grandfather of first-person shooters right here. If it wasn't for Wolfenstein 3D, this was this would be pretty much the first old-school boomer shooter ever made. It's a classic. What do I need to say about Doom? It's fucking Doom. It's got awesome gameplay, really great music, great level design, an absolute classic game. 1994, Doom 2. This was a hard choice between Doom 2 and Donkey Kong Country, but personally, I've played a lot more Doom 2 than I have Donkey Kong Country, so I decided to go with that. I mean, it's basically the sequel to Doom 1. It's the same game with more weapons, bigger levels, more enemies, and still a good-ass soundtrack. Maybe even better than the first one. The soundtrack is great in this game. 1995, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, one of my favourite 
fighting games right here. Back when I was actually into fighting games, because nowadays, I really couldn't give a shit about fighting games. But back then, Tekken, Street Fighter, and Mortal Kombat were really fun fighting games. A lot more simplistic than fighting games these days. But I was definitely more uh, million to Mortal Kombat because of the gore and the characters. It was a really fun fighting game that pretty much every kid wanted to play, but very few got to play because of all the violence and gore. 1996, Duke Nukem 3D. Not only my favorite game of the year, but just one of my favorite games of all time. Really hard choice here because Crash Bandicoot 1 also came out that year, and I absolutely love that game. One of my favorite platformers of all time. But come on, I had to go with the Duke. It's fucking Duke Nukem 3D. What else do I need to say? 1997, Crash Bandicoot 2. Another hard choice here because Quake 2 also came out that year. And I'm a huge fan of Quake 2. That is a classic boomer shooter out there that I only played um, last year. But I have to go with Crash Bandicoot 2 just because that was a game that I actually played back on the PS1 and I've put a lot more time into it as well and it's just a lot more nostalgic. 1998, Oddworld Abe's Exodus. Now that's probably controversial for people that know me because as you guys know, but Resident Evil 2 original came out that year. But as much as I love that game, I have to go with Oddworld Abe's Exodus. That game was just one of my childhood favorites. That is my childhood right there. That is pure nostalgia for me right there. Not only that, but it's just a great game. I played this game dozens of times as a kid and as an adult, and I love it just as much as an adult that, than I did as a kid. It's just a classic platformer that I feel doesn't get enough love. 1999, Silent Hill 1. Oh my god, this game is absolutely phenomenal. I only played this recently on stream, but it immediately became not only one of my favorite horror games of all time, but also one of my favorite games of all time. It was an absolute pleasure to go through this game. Despite playing it as an adult, I actually felt like a kid playing this shit. The old school survival horror with the amazing PS1 graphics. And an absolutely terrifying game on top of that. Amazing music. Interesting characters and story, great environments, terrifying enemies, easily one of the best horror games of all time, period. And yeah, it was a hard choice again because Resident Evil 3 came out that year as well. But personally, I think Silent Hill 1 is a lot better. It's a lot scarier and it's just overall a lot better in my opinion. 2000 Resident Evil Code Veronica X. Oh man, I love this game. I absolutely adore this game more than probably anyone because this is a game that gets a lot of hate on a sled. This game gets a lot of hate, even from old school Resident Evil fans, but I absolutely love this game. It's an absolute classic survival horror game. I love everything about it. I love the gameplay. I love the story. I love the characters. I love the music. I love the environments. I love the... I love everything. I love everything about this game. It is an absolutely phenomenal game that if you're into games of this style, you have to play. Don't listen to all the hate. This is probably coming from mainly casuals, but this is without a doubt one of the best of our horror games of all time. I fucking love this game. 2001 Silent Hill 2. Another classic old school style horror game. Do I need to say anything? Really? It's one of the best horror games of all time. 2002, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. Another game that was a huge part of my childhood right here. One of my favorites from my childhood. Just pure nostalgia, this game. Another game that I played a dozen times as a kid and a dozen more times as an adult. Just a great skateboarding game. Back when I used to be a big fan of skateboarding games. People may not know this, but I was a huge fan of skateboarding games back on the PS2. And this was easily my favorite. The gameplay was just the most enjoyable to me, and the soundtrack was phenomenal. This got me into bands like Iron Maiden right here. 2003, 13, one of my favorite first person shooters right here, and one of the most underrated first person shooters. The graphics, still to this day, are absolutely gorgeous with the cell shading style. 
great music, fun gunplay, the awesome on-screen comic book style pop-ups. If you like first-person shooters, play this game. Get it on Steam, it's cheap as fuck, play it. It is awesome. Hard choice here again because Silent Hill 3 came out this year and that's another classic survival horror game. But personally, I had to go with 13. I think I've just put a lot more time into that game. I just loved it. 2004, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. An easy choice here. Probably the best in the series. So much content in this game. Amazing story, amazing characters, great missions, great soundtrack. It is just a classic open world game that is still hard to compete with nowadays. There are open world games coming out the, uh, nowadays that still can't top this game. A game from 2004. 2005, Resident Evil 4. Might be my favorite game of all time right here. As much as I love the old school Resident Evil games and as much as I hate what Resident Evil became starting off with this game, I can't deny my love for this game. The gameplay is just some of the, the most fun, enjoyable gameplay I've ever experienced. The combat is so fluid, so refined, so satisfying with great mechanics. A ton of enemy variety. Great story with great characters. Great music. Great levels. Great bosses. It is damn near a masterpiece, this game. 2006. Hitman Blood Money, one of my favorite stealth games of all time right here. The level design is absolutely spectacular. We have the different targets, the different semi-open world levels with all the different choices of taking out the targets, changing into different outfits, finding different ways of traversing the levels, taking out enemies. It is a classic game that I feel doesn't get enough uh, praise, man. I love this game. 2007, God of War 2. One of my favorite games of all time right here. Back when God of War was fucking great. Fuck God of War now. This is real God of War right here. Good old hack and slash action with a badass protagonist in motherfucking Kratos. Great soundtrack. Awesome gameplay. Fun levels, great boss fights. It's one of the most devastating downfalls of a series ever. It is a, an embarrassment what the series has become, but it still doesn't change the fact that it was once one of the most badass series out there, full stop. 2008, Saints Row 2, another spectacular open world sandbox game. Up there with GTA San Andreas this game. This game is an absolute classic. One of the best GTA clones, you could say. Man, I love this game. Easily my favorite game of the year. Dead Space 1 was a great game from 2008 as well, but this was easily my favorite game from that year. It just had everything. Great soundtrack, great story, great characters, great levels, great open world, a ton of side content. It had Everything, so much customization, the different fighting styles, so many miscellaneous things. One of the best games of its time. And let's be honest, this shit was better than GTA 4. This game absolutely shat on GTA 4, let's be perfectly honest. 2009, Left 4 Dead 2, easy choice right here. I absolutely love this game. This is a game that I especially found a lot of love for on the PC with all the custom maps that you can play on there. Oh my God, I just love this game. I love this game. The gameplay is so fun with the teamwork. The, the game design is so well made with the different special infected and how the game mechanics work. Entertaining characters, awesome campaigns, and easily one of the best corp games of all time. This might be the best corp game of all time. 2010. God of War 3, another hard choice here because Red Dead Redemption 1 also came out that year and I love Red Dead Redemption. That's one of my favorite open world games of all time. But God of War 3 is just a game that I put a lot more time into compared to Red Dead 1, so I had to go with that. Just like God of War 2, it's a great hack and slash game with great gameplay, great story, great bosses. Still the badass Kratos, this was the last great God of War game before the slow downfall 
and then to New School God of War EU. 2011 Dead Space 2, another one of my favorite games of all time. Just like Resident Evil 4, the gameplay is so satisfying, so well made, so refined, so fun. The way that the mechanics work is just so fun and rewarding with the flinch mechanic. Along with great enemy types that all work differently. A cool sci-fi environment, despite me not being a big fan of sci-fi, I really like the setting in Dead Space 2. This game is in the category of the action horror games, because I don't see this as a survival horror game, same as uh, Dead Space 1. This is an action horror game, and this is like top 3 action horror games, along with Resident Evil 1. Not Resident Evil 1, what the fuck am I on about? Resident Evil 4, and also another game that you'll see coming up in just a second. 2012. Far Cry 3, not my favourite Far Cry in the series that I probably had to go to 4, but, you know, Far Cry 3 was pretty much the foundation for 4, so it's still just as good, it's just that 4 had more content, more weapons, just overall more stuff than 3, so I personally prefer that game, but 3 is still a great game, great open world with a lot of side content, a lot of shit to do, the hunting, the gang liberations, what the hell they're called. A really vibrant game, very colourful. The different weapons, the different vehicles, all the different missions. Just a fun open world game. 2013, Call of Juarez Gunslinger. One of the most underrated first person shooters I've ever played here. The graphics are so beautiful in this game. I love cell shaded graphics. Just like 13, it looks spectacular this game. A great western with really fun gunplay, despite the game being so short. It is just an absolute blast to play this game. A game that I played for the first time last year and is easily became one of my favourite more modern first person shooters. And this was another tough choice as well because you had a couple of other games that came out that year that I really loved like Splinter Cell Blacklist. That is a great stealth game right there. I don't understand why there hasn't been another Splinter Cell game. That was a great Splinter Cell game right there. And also one of my favorite new platformers, Rayman Legends. 2014, The Evil Within. The third game in that list of best action horror games that I was speaking of just a second ago. This game is a fucking modern classic here. Modern fucking classic. Fuck New School Resident Evil. Every Resident Evil past four combined doesn't even come close to how good this game is. This is basically the sequel to RE4. The mechanics are great. The gunplay is satisfying. It's got good gore, cool levels, a ton of enemy variety, a ton of bosses, some good music here and there. The story, eh, who cares about the story? The game is great. 2015, Dying Light. I was gonna go with Black Ops 3 Zombies, but that isn't technically a game. It's a game mode, so I went with Dying Light instead. And this is easily one of my favorite modern games, because, you know, I mean, there's not really much competition. There's very few modern games that I like, or at least mainstream modern games. A ton of content with a ton of updates, cool enemy design. It was basically the sequel to Dead Island, and it still to this day has one of the best DLCs ever made, the following. An actual DLC that is good, actually worth your money. 2016, Dark Souls 3. Pretty much the only series that I care about anymore, the Souls series. From Software are still killing it with games, and this is one of my favourite of the modern uh, from software error, so to speak. This is where they start to make it more fast paced. The boss variety is amazing. The enemy variety is amazing. The gameplay is fun, challenging, but rewarding. It's the only modern series that's even worth fucking playing. Let's be honest. 2017, The Evil Within 2. Not as good as The Evil Within 1, but still a good ass action horror game. Which did do some things that I wasn't a fan of, like having more of an emphasis on stealth, which made me feel like I was playing The Last of Us. It also removed some things like the match mechanic, which I'm still pissed about, by the way. 
but for modern standards, it was a pretty good game and a pretty good sequel. 2018, Guacamelee 2, the first indie game in this video. I'm trying to keep it as mainstream as possible, but with these more recent years, it's going to be incredibly hard to do so. Metroidvania is one of my favorite genres of all time, and this is on there with some of my favorites. It is a blast to play with beautiful graphics, great soundtrack, fun combat, great platforming, and a game that deserves a thousand times more praise than any mainstream game to come out in the past five years. 2019, Sekiro. Another hard choice here because there was three games that really rivaled that game, being Blasphemous, God's Trigger, and Valfaris. But Sekiro is the game that I put the most time into, so I went with that. It's a great Souls game that changed up the gameplay with the new parrying encounter system. It wasn't your traditional Souls game with a roll, heavy attack, block. They did something different, you know, they took a risk, and it was a great game. I can't wait to see Sekiro 2. 2020. Crash Bandicoot 4, a pleasant surprise, but this was a great platforming game. When I played this shit, I thought it was going to be garbage, but it was actually a really fun game and a good Crash Bandicoot game. Definitely a lot harder than any other Crash Bandicoot game, but it was a good game. It had some problems like with the perspective, but it was a good game nonetheless. 2021, Tormented Souls. All I need to say is that this game is better than any Resident Evil in the past 20 years. It is more Resident Evil than any of those games for the past 20 years. 2022, Elden Ring. Once again, another great game by From Software. Like I said, the only developer that's even worth paying attention to or giving your money to. Any other game out there, I could not give a shit about. But From Software are still making good ass games, and they proved it two years ago with this game. Which, <laughs> this is so funny, it won Game of the Year instead of God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> oh, fuck God of War Ragnarok, what a piece of shit. And lastly, 2023 Resident Evil 4 Remake. Now, let me explain, okay? I know that's very controversial giving my opinions on that game. But the thing is, it's, it's simple. It's the only game that I played that came out that year. I haven't played a single other game that came out in 2023, so what else am I supposed to do? It's my only option. It would without a doubt be a completely different story if I actually played some of the games that came out that year, but I simply didn't. There's some games that I have my eye on, like Blasphemous 2, The Last Faith, and Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun, which, even without playing, I could say that I like those games better. But I can't say that a game that I haven't even played yet is my favourite game of the year. That's just stupid. That's just ridiculous, right? So, this is my only choice. Resident Evil 4 Remake is my favourite <laughs> is my favorite game of 2023. That will soon change, though, okay? That will soon change. So I hope you'll enjoyed this video, a bit of a shitty way to end the video right there, but it is what it is, 35 years of the best games of each year. Feel free to leave your own lists in the comments if you like, I know it would take a while because it's 35 games, but hope you'll enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out, sayonara, I'm at this bitch.